So the first lecture will be about HTML. But what is it? So everybody today goes to a browser one way or another, either in the phone, a tablet, desktop computer, laptop, they open the browser, they go to a website, type in the address bar or something, enter. And then you see a website like this one. This is the Google website. How is this built? That's where HTML comes in. It stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So back in the early days of the internet, uh, they created this to share scientific documents among the scientific community. Uh, but they didn't kind of foresee that they everybody be using them in a different way that we do today for social media, for example, like Facebook, Instagram, and all these fancy apps that are highly interactive and dynamic in the things that you see. You click something, uh, you move things around, uh, you upload, you comment. There's so much that's evolved from that very early days of the internet where they just wanted to share a text. That's why in when we talk about HTML, you're going to hear the term document a lot because that's the original meaning of that. So when you visit a web page, that's an HTML document. Now that's written with some code, some sort of language, and that's called HTML. If you go to your browser, right click, and click to view the page source, uh, you can actually see the source code for any website today. Uh, it's open source, anybody can see it. So if I click that, this is the actual uh, HTML page for the Google. Of course, there's a lot of stuff you don't understand because uh, when you build a page and everything, they, they, they remove all the space and all the visuals that makes us uh, better read the code. But ultimately, it boils down to HTML. Uh, of course, there's other, other elements that you have to add on. Uh, HTML is just the structure of a website. Although, how do you change the visuals? That's a different matter. That's called CSS, Cascading Style Sheets. And that's a topic for another lecture. And then the third and final element that we do on the front end is called uh, the JavaScript programming language that's used to actually manipulate the document. That is, you can actually change things in real time to make it dynamic. But again, that's a topic for another day. Today, we focus just on the structure with HTML. Okay, so what we do? First, you gotta go somewhere in your file system and create a directory where we'll be storing the projects. Uh, in my case, I have that repository directory here. I open Visual Studio Code and I click File and I click Open Folder and I open this directory that I had created. Now, if you're not familiar with file system, I don't know how, if everybody here knows how to create folders and files, I suppose so. But let me just demonstrate for the sake of uh, having to do it the first time. Okay, let's see. I'll share my... I'm using Windows right now, so I use uh, File Explorer. If you're on Mac, it's Finder. And if you're on Linux, it's Nautilus or Tuna or whatever the your distro uses. So again, if you want to go by the user interface, uh, just go here somewhere in your computer, create a folder for all your projects. And what I did is created a directory by right click new folder. And the one that I did was full stack web dev three because I've did others before I had to add the number. So this is the one I go to this folder and I create my files here. Okay. So that's what I'm using for my visual studio code. I just opened this folder and I have this readme file. That's information about the course and I'll be writing out the code here. Okay, so let me create a directory. I'll call it SRC, which stands for source. Inside that, I'm gonna create a new file called index.html. So when we have HTML files or web pages, you have to name with a uh, .html extension. Now, index is a special name, which means like the main page, the root page of a certain uh, endpoint or slash resource. Now, when we have HTML pages, uh, you have to always have a boilerplate to define the structure. Now, this boilerplate might not make any sense to you in the beginning. You just got to write it out. Later, you understand what it means. But the way we write HTML is with markup language. And markup language is basically you have uh, what we call we called tags. And these tags are written this way. You have the less than sign, and then you have a name of the tag. For example, HTML, that's the name. 
and then you close it with a greater than sign. Now this is called a tag and the name of the element is HTML. Let me make it bigger if it's too small for you. Okay, now these are also called angle brackets. So you might hear that as well. All right, so what I did, I opened a tag with the element HTML. Now this will contain HTML thing. I also have to make sure to add a closing tag, a corresponding closing tag. So when you have closing tags, all you do is to repeat the same, except you have to say less than slash, and then the same name as the, the opening tag, okay? So we open the HTML tag, we close the HTML tag. Okay, at the top, we usually have the doc type like this. Basically, it's less than uh, exclamation, doc type, all caps. Make sure you're following the same convention as me with all caps, space, HTML, and then greater than. Now, this is a kind of special thing that's saying, when the browser reads or loads this page, I want you to use the version of HTML 5 because in the past, HTML had other versions and the browser would be confused, oh, what HTML version are you using? Because some features are not available in certain versions, right? So to avoid the browser confusing what version you're using, when we say the doc type HTML, it means using HTML version five. Okay. Now we always have to have this, it's just a boilerplate. Just, uh, okay, now, let me disable my extension here because I have a GitHub Copilot, but we're beginners, we shouldn't be using this. Otherwise it's gonna tell us what to do. <laughs> All right, let me just reload uh, to make it go away. Okay, now with that, we have to have, we usually have two, two other tags under HTML. So the document itself has a part that people see that's the body of the document. And they have the part that people don't see, but it's a metadata thing. That's the head. Now the head contains things like defining what the title of the page is. So when you have the browser, you have many tabs open, you're gonna see that title, it's defining the head. Okay, so we got the head. So we gotta make it a tag like this with angle brackets and make sure to close it. So whenever I type HTML, I always make sure to close it right away. Otherwise I always forget. So that's why I already closed it. Now the second part is the body. So open the body tag with the angle brackets and then close it like this. Now you might've noticed I typed my code with some spaces and line breaks. It doesn't really matter. It could be like one line like this, but this is really hard to read. You know, as a person, it's really hard. The computer doesn't care. But for us, really hard. That's why we always add new lines to make the code more readable. So whenever I open a tag like this, I break a new line and add some space in the beginning, usually at least two. And this space at the beginning of the line, it's called, in, in general, for programming languages, it's called indentation, okay, indentation. And that's what my Visual Studio Code already does that for me automatically because it's very common practice, not only in HTML, but in programming, computer programming in general. Okay, so whenever I open a tag, I make sure to add two spaces on the left. So you notice if I have two open tags like this, it will add one, two, three, four, because every open, it adds more space. So when it closes, it, after the closing, it's when it goes back to the same level as before, only two. So like that, and then like that. Okay, so this is how you nicely structure it out. That's better to read, although it's not really necessary to add all those spaces and new lines. Okay, so HTML document, always two sections, the head and the body. The body is what people see. The head is metadata like the title in the browser tab. So let's go to the body. And we're gonna type, hello world. And then we're gonna go to the head and add a title to this document. That's what we're gonna see in the tab. Uh, that's done with the title tag. So angle brackets, title, close, angle brackets, and then give it a name, uh, my first web page, about that. And then you have to finish it off 
with the closing tag. So usually it's like this. We have a tag that's open. We type some content or text that usually people will see. And then to finish it off, you have to close the tag to say that, to tell the browser, hey, I finished writing my title. That's what it is. So it's between the open and closing tags. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? If you have any questions, please ask in the chat. Okay, now we save the file. I press Control S in my Visual Studio code. Now, how can I see this web page? It's simple, just open in the browser. So one way is you can right click here and you can use the reveal in File Explorer or Finder if you're using Mac. And that will open the window with that directory. Let me share with you. Here's my file explorer and here's the file. I can right click, open or open with if you have multiple browsers like me, you choose the browser of your choice. Let me choose Chrome for the sake of example. And then I'm gonna go to my Chrome and you should be able to see it here. Another way is obviously you can go to the browser and I click here, open file somewhere, one of these things, or you can type the address, the path to the file, like it's here, C colon slash users and so on, all the way to index.html. And you can see hello world is here. If you right click, click page, view page source, you will see that's exactly what we type for the code. Okay, so that's our first web page. If you remember, why do you have a title under the head? Because look at the tab here. That's what I wrote there. So if you have multiple tabs, you know what the page is about with the title under the head, right? And Obviously, you can also change this icon using uh, another thing that you learn later on if you link a favicon, but today we're not going to do that. You can look up in your own. Anyway, let's write some more harder code. Now that everybody got down to basics, we can go on. Now, most of the work that we do is going to go under the body, so you can kind of ignore all the rest as you're building your pages for now. So everything between the open and closing tag for body is where we want to write the content for the website. Now, when we talk about uh, something being inside another, I want to point out that when I say, hello world is inside the body, that just means this text, the sequence of characters is between the open tag for body and the closing tag for body. Right? It has to come after the open and before the closing. Keep that in mind. And because we have indentation here, that allows us to visualize that this is inside that. That's why we use that. Okay, just a tool for us to visualize the code. Anyway, let me teach you the paragraph element. So when we have documents, we write uh, paragraphs. So to write a paragraph is very simple. The name of the element is P. So you write angle brackets P, close the angle brackets, and then write whatever text you want for the paragraph. Let's keep the hello world. And then angle brackets, and you have to close the paragraph tag with angle brackets slash, and then P, which is the same name as the open tag, and then greater than. So it's always like this. Remember, uh, angle brackets, name of the element, uh, and then whatever content, if it's a, if it's necessary, and then close the tag with the angle bracket slash, and then the name is the same, has to match the same name of the element as the open tag. Okay, that's the paragraph there. Uh, if you save that, when you change the source code, you have to save the file and then reload the page to see it, okay? Let me show you there back to Chrome, I have to reload, okay? Reload a page. And now this is a paragraph. I know you might notice it's the same. Actually, it added some uh, stuff, space to the top and bottom because the default paragraph styles does that. But if you, if you see the page source, uh, it's a paragraph. 
Now, another tool to analyze websites besides right-click view page source is if you right-click this paragraph here and click inspect. Now, this will bring up a very powerful tool called the browser developer tools. And you see this bottom panel, that's the dev tools. And in particular, there's so many functions that are useful to analyze and understand what's going on in your website or debug any problems. And uh, this one under Elements tab in Chrome, I think it's going to say Inspector in Firefox. So Firefox has slightly different tab names. Uh, you can see here all the live document view. It's similar to view page source, except view page source only shows you the original document as it was received from the server. But once it's received from the server, usually the document is manipulated and many elements get moved around, things get changed. So this allows you to see the live view of the document as it is right now at this point in time. So you can see there's a P there and that's the paragraph. Let me make it bigger. Uh, by the way, I make it bigger for you with control plus and minus. Plus is bigger, minus is uh, zoom out. Okay, if you cannot see this, let me know. I'll make it bigger, even bigger. Uh, okay, so you can click this, click that to see all this stuff. And you can see if, as I point to the different elements, it highlights in the content there some stuff. Now that stuff is mostly to do with the styling and dimensions, uh, the space that it's taking in the content. We're gonna learn more about that later, but suffice to say, this is just adding margins. You can see there's some space before the text and after. So that's called a margin, okay? And that's what that kind of beige brown color highlight is doing. And and it's telling you also in the kind of popover thing, the bubble, uh, the name of the element, uh, the dimensions, width, uh, and the height, right? The height is after the cross. And the unit for dimensions here is called a pixel, PX. So you're gonna see that a lot. That's how we usually measure things on the computer screen. Okay, now I talked a lot about element. So you heard me take a look about that a lot. So basically in HTML, we build a page with different elements. We have like paragraphs, we have images, we have video, we have audio, we have like uh, headings, which is the big titles. Uh, we have input elements that allows the user to type maybe a number, uh, like an email. Maybe they put a date, like a calendar input element and so on. So that's how we build them. Now, you might see the name element being interchanged a lot with the tag, right? So when you have uh, the tag here, it has angle brackets, so it's called a P tag. But in itself, without the angle brackets, we call it the paragraph element. And that's how it's, it is internally. As we learn and learn with JavaScript, it's, uh, this is a paragraph uh, element. Okay, HTML element. Okay, is that clear to everybody? If you have questions, let me know. Okay. So that's the main point about HTML. We're always gonna approach it like this, with tags opening, something between the tags and tags closing. Now, there's gonna be a lot more to that later as we learn because how do we add, give it additional information because you can only put things between the open and close. We're gonna learn about other things called attributes later. But it's fast to say, let's learn about the headings one through six. So when you have a book, usually you have chapters, right? We have sections of a book. I mean, same thing kind of for a document. You have like a big text with a section name, right, title and then some paragraphs, and then subsections, and so on. We can use the H1 through H6 elements for that. So let's start with a tag and go back, it's H1. H stands for heading, okay? And then you can type your title here. Let's call it section one, and then you have to close it with the less than slash H1, like that. Now I'm gonna save it. Now, I have to go back to the browser, refresh, right? But let me teach you a very convenient way to do it from within Visual Studio Code itself. If you go here, if you're using Visual Studio Code, I know you're, if you use a different editor, it has a similar feature. 
if you go to the extensions or plugins and you look for a uh, live preview and install this one for Microsoft and click install. I already did. And that will give you a way to preview the document from within Visual Studio Code so I don't have to have an external browser. Now it does have some limitations that was as we'll see later, like when we click links, but good enough for now. Okay, so I go back to the Explorer view. I can click my file here again. So what I'm gonna do is open the command palette. I can click view, command palette, or I can press control shift P in my case. That's the hotkey. And it's gonna have this search menu with the greater than sign. And I'm gonna type live preview. And there are several options. I'm gonna choose the one for internal browser. Show preview internal browser. It should open to the side. Uh, like a, a small browser so I can see the document in real time as I change the code, okay? So I can see this is the H1. It's the first thing here. Visually, it appears as text in big letters and bold. Now, suppose we add another paragraph here. So again, when we add new elements of the document, it doesn't matter whether you like the spacing and white space and line breaks. So I could add a new paragraph here. By the way, I can type Lauren like three tab on VS code and it will generate random text. If you didn't catch that, I just type Lauren three and I press tab and it generates random text like three words. So I can have something there. Anyway, close the paragraph less than slash B like that. Now it can be in the same line, doesn't matter, but it will come after this, right? You can see visually uh, hello world is not exactly on the same line in the document. And that's because of the behavior of the elements. By default, a paragraph, it will like push any other thing beside it. It doesn't like anybody next to it. That behavior can be changed with CSS as we later learn. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you have it here or there, the output is the same. So usually this is better for me to read the code. So that's why I always have a paragraph for a line. Okay, now I taught you H1, which determines this is a section, of the top level section. What if I have a subsection of this? That's when the H2 comes in. This is a subsection like that. So open tag H2, type whatever you wanna say for the subsection title and then close it with the closing tag for H2. Don't forget the slash before the element name. Okay, and then the subsection would, would have more paragraphs, right? So you can go on, add a P, let me add five words with Lauren five tab character, like that, and so on and so on, right? You have other stuff there. By the way, I duplicated a line with, in my case, I'm using Windows, I press Alt, Shift, down, down. Okay, Alt, Shift, down will duplicate the line down. That's what I did. Or you can just copy and paste or do Lauren, whatever, or type whatever. Okay, so, and so on. So we have subsections of a subsection of a subsection. So you can have H3, oops, my keyboard changed. Change it back, H3. This is heading level three. And I made a typo there. Adding. Looks like that. You can see as visually, if I type H4, uh, visually the, the font size, it's gradually smaller and smaller, right? H5. So this is like subsection of a subsection of a subsection of a subsection. You, you get the point, right? And this is adding level six. That's the last one, okay? One through six. Uh, so I just have to tell you about these, but these days people don't really use them uh, coherently. In the beginning, the websites were just documents, though that's why they, they thought about this. But these days it's mostly, they only use H1 for SEO, search engine optimization, and all the subsections of H2. And you might see people using them in very weird ways. So 
one thing I have to tell you also, uh, despite HTML having uh, specific elements or tags for specific things like paragraph, image, video, and so on, you can always modify them to be whatever you want. Okay, so you might see people using a tag in a completely different way from its original purpose. Okay, so you're gonna see that a lot. For example, there's a I tag that people usually use for icons from Font Awesome. They use the uh, I element, which was uh, meant for idiomatic text and visually it appears as italics. Uh, that's the just the way it is. Yeah, it, HTML has evolved into all these dynamic apps, so people had to find ways of uh, doing whatever they needed to do, so they will repur repurpose all the elements for their use case. Okay, enough said about that. If you somebody asks if you have multiple subsections, can you put multiple H2s? Absolutely, yes. So you can have another H2 here, and. If you go by the original meaning, this would mean, okay, this is the top level, this is one subsection, this is another, and this is like the subsection of this one. Yeah, it's up to you to make it coherent. You don't have, it's not a rule or anything to write them in a specific way. So it, it, HTML will let you do whatever you want. You can have all weird stuff happening, some tag inside another tag, inside another tag. That doesn't make any sense semantically, but that's totally allowed. Okay. Let me see, what else can we do? Oh yeah. Let's have fun adding links. Okay, hello world, we got that. What if I wanna to go to a website or another page? Let me teach you how to go to a website externally, somebody else's website, and I'll teach you how to make our own different page. So let's say you wanna to go to your favorite website. Let's say I'm gonna to go to yahoo.com. How do I do that? Well, it's called the anchor tag or A for short. So I'm gonna go here to line eight. After hello world, I'm going, I want to have a text saying, go to Yahoo. And I want to make that a link. So I have to enclose this in an anchor tag. So angle brackets A. And then after the text, angle brackets A with a slash preceding the element name. Okay, that's how you create an anchor tag, which we commonly call links, hyperlinks, and so on. Now the A needs to know where you want to go. If I click, nothing happens. So that's when we have to introduce you to the concept attributes. When you need to uh, provide additional information to an element, you add an attribute. And to add an attribute, you locate the open tag, and then to the right-hand side of its element name, add a space. Then you type the attribute name. In this case, it's href, href. And to give it a value, associated value of this attribute, you have to type the syntax equal sign, double quotes, and then type the value and finish off with another double quotes. Okay, so here in the value, the value is between the double quotes. You have to pass the URL. The URL is what we usually see in the browser address bar. So if I hold to yahoo.com, press enter, I copy from the address bar. And that's gonna be something like https colon slash slash yahoo.com or www.yahoo.com, right? Uh, so you can go to your favorite website, copy the URL and paste here. Okay, so now you can see there's a highlight. It's a underline, right, underscore, with the text now in blue, which is the default color for links. Now, I don't want to use this to click because this uh, live review is weird and it will take me somewhere. It doesn't work to go back. So I'm gonna use the actual browser to demonstrate this. So I'm gonna first save the file and go to Chrome. Uh, let me do Firefox because uh, I wanna have different browsers for people to see what it's like. It's the same thing, right? Uh, Firefox here. Let me copy the file path. 
And here we go, I reloaded it. Oops. And I can click go to Yahoo and it goes to yahoo.com. Let me go back. Okay, I'm gonna add a zoom here, control plus, so it's easier for you to see, but the original is not zoomed in. And that's how you make links. Just build a name card tag, give it an href attribute, and point it to the URL of your website. Now, I might be asking, what if we have a different page within our own website? Well, to what we usually do is create a new file for another page. Let's say we have the news page dot HTML. This page will be for news. So I have to follow the same pattern as before, the boilerplate for every single HTML file. I know it's tedious just the way it is. You got used to it. First, the doc type, less than, exclamation, all caps, doc type, space, HTML, greater than. Because what? This is telling the browser, use HTML version five. Next, we have the HTML tag, which is always there, enclosing the head and the body. So HTML tag, and I always like to close it before I forget. And we got the head, close the head. We got the body, close the body. I recommend you always close it right away because you always forget. And then we got a title tag to the head to add so that when we see the browser tab, we'll see something. Let's call it news. And then the body, like, we can add some news here. Lauren five in a paragraph, just for the sake of having something. Okay. And that's the complete news page. You can right click the news in your file explorer and open it in the browser, or you can control shift P here and live review. It will open to the side, but obviously I don't want to do that. I want to demonstrate how you can navigate from index to news. So I'm going to click back to index. And you can see here, I want to add a link to that other page from our own website. Let's, let me go here before section one. I will add an anchor tag. Uh, read the news about that and then close the anchor tag. Now I have to tell it where, where will it go? Add the attribute, href, go to the open tag, right hand side of its name, space, href equals sign, double quotes, double quotes, and between the double quotes, you type the path to this file, to this page. Uh, in our case, uh, we can use a relative path because we have the files in the same directory. Okay, otherwise you, you can always use the absolute with the C colon slash if you're on Windows, blah, 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 but that's just overkill, right? So we wanna just be relative. So we just say the name of the file, news.html, because they're in the same directory, it will know it's there. Save it. Uh, let's see here, I scroll up, click read the news, and I go to the news page with the Lauren Ibsen text. Now let's go back, right? We need a way to go back. Obviously I can click the browser back button, but how do I do through the UI here, the user interface? Let's just add an anchor tag, href, right? Space href. Uh, what's the name of the index file? Index.html. And then go back to index or homepage. How about that? And let's put it before the paragraph. Okay, so we got here at the top, go back to home page. That's the text between the open and close anchor tag. And if you hover the pointer over it, you can see usually the browser in the bottom left, it tells you where that link is pointing to. So it's gonna go to the index.html. So that way we're back. Now we can read the news, we can go back to home page. Okay, so that's how I create hyperlinks. Let's make it more exciting and learn how to do images. How do I add an image to my document? 
to my website, to my web page. That's the IMG tag. And this one is special, as you will see. So let's let's go here to actually let let's let's stay news. Let's go to news and add an image there. So after the paragraph, I'm gonna add an image. How do I add an image? Uh, tag angle bracket IMG close tag like that. Now IMG is called a self closing tag. There are some tags in HTML that don't need a closing tag, corresponding closing tag. One of them is IMG. So you can just have an IMG like this. Now, how does it know what image to show? Attributes. So you need an attribute. So go here, right-hand side of its name with a space. Now this is called SRC, which stands for source. Okay, be careful, it's not the same as the anchor href. And you notice the, all the names usually abbreviated because back in the days of programming, people like to abbreviate stuff. Uh, okay, so source, the same way we did href, we need a URL here. So the image can be anywhere on the internet. You can find an image and right click, copy its li image link, go to a search engine, find an image, or you can have an image in your own machine here and you follow the same pattern. Just put the name of the image here like we did for href, but I'm gonna do an external image. So let me go here to a search engine and find an image. In my browser Chrome here, I go to bing.com, that's a search engine, click images tab. I'll just find the image of a dog for the sake of example. And I'll maybe choose this one here. And I click view image, that should open the image there. I can either also right click and copy image address. That's also possible. Or you can copy here at the top, the URL from the address bar. Control C to copy. In my case, Mac is command C. And going back to the source code, I can paste that for the value of the source attribute like that. Now I see this one doesn't work. Some websites don't allow you to use their images, like they block an external. So I think this one is not working. Let me grab another one. Let's see. This one is no good. I... This one I know works. The Dalmatian, I always use this one. Let me copy that. And I will replace it. Now that one worked. Uh, but it's just too big for us to see. So we always have to make sure to resize the images. Uh, one way to reach HTML is with a width attribute and height attribute if you need to change the height as well. Uh, how do I add another attribute to an element that already has one? You can do either before or after an existing one. Make sure there's a space though. So I can do it uh, here before, or I can do it here after, okay? It doesn't matter. Let's do after, that's the easiest. I'm gonna add a with attribute, equal sign, double quotes, double quotes. So it's always like this, the syntax, attribute name, equal sign, double quotes, double quotes. Now between the double quotes of the value, what's the width value? Well, it's a number that's gonna have the unit pixel. So if you do 100s like that, maybe that's too small, let's try 200s like that. That looks good to me. Uh, you notice I only change the width and the height change accordingly. That's because if you only change the width one dimension, uh, the height, the other dimension will proportionately resize. If you really wanted to change also the height, add another height attribute here, like 50, but you can see it stretches it and breaks the original aspect ratio of the image. So that's why I just use one dimension. So the others automatically resize. That's how you do images. Now, you might see a lot, there's another attribute that people use for images called alt. And that's used for two purposes. One is when the image breaks, or you wanna show alternative, alternate text, describing exactly what the image was supposed to be. Okay, for example, a Dalmatian dog. That's exactly what the image is about, right? Uh, so if for some reason the image is broken, for example, I remove the source, 
uh, you're going to see a Dalmatian dog instead of the image there. Let me revert back. The other uses for accessibility, uh, there are people who have trouble reading a website, seeing, or blind people. They use what's called a screen reader. Screen reader is a program that when it visits a website, it reads out loud everything for you. So when it comes to this paragraph, it's going to read Lauren Ibsen, Dolor, Isida Met, blah, blah, blah. And then it hits the image. Since the person cannot see the image, its description is read. And the description comes from the alt attribute. So the person will, will hear a Dalmatian dog. That way they understand, oh, this part of the website is an image of a Dalmatian dog. Despite them not being able to see it, they understand what it is. So that's why it's very important to accessibility. To and whenever you add images, make sure to add an alt attribute that specifically describes the image. Okay. And that's it for images. You can just add more with the same way. Uh, we're almost out of time. I just want to show you how we can do audio and how we can do video. And for the audio, I want to give you, after the image here, we're going to use the audio tag. So audio like this. And then make sure to close it. It's not self-closing. You need a closing corresponding tag. Now, you need to know, OK, what's the source of the audio? So source, just like image, you add it there. Now, we need an audio URL from somewhere. I'm going to paste in the Zoom chat one that I made. And it's the dogs barking. I paste to the Zoom chat. You can copy and paste to the source. Once I got that, you can see nothing shows. That's because we have to sh tell the element audio to show some default controls. Otherwise, it's going to think we are in charge of designing the controls. I want you the default, so I add controls attribute to make it show the default browser one. Now, this is you might see the controls slightly visually different among across Firefox, Chrome, and other browsers, because each of them has their own uh, style. But ultimately, it's the same thing with the play button and volume control and dot, dot, dot. OK, if you click the play, I hear the dogs barking. Obviously, the recording for this will not hear, but the dogs are barking in the audio. All right, everybody. And that's audio. And then video is the same way. Can you guess the name of the tag for video? It's video. And then source attribute. Close the video tag. And then give it a source, a URL from somewhere. I'm going to give you one of Big Bug Bunny. And I paste it the Zoom chat. And I paste it here. And this is like uh, some bunny video. It's just too big as well. So like images, you should add a width attribute to make it smaller, 200. And let's see if it's still working. You need to also show the controls like the audio. So add the controls attribute. By the way, you notice the controls attribute doesn't need a value, right? It's a special kind of attribute that's kind of like a Boolean, true or false. Uh, so you don't have to have equal sign and the quotes. Just say controls there. And if I click play, I should be able to see the video of Big Buck Bunny. And I click pause there. OK. So very similar image, audio, and video. Just change the name of the tag and keep the source. and. Possibly add the width, and for audio and video, add the controls if you don't want to design your own. Now, let's finish off with lists, OK? I want to go here, and after this video, how do I make a bullet point list in HTML? Now, that will involve two elements. The element for the list itself, the container, and then the elements for the list items. Now, for the list, it's called UL, unordered list, because there's no specific order. So UL like that, make sure to close it. And then between them, we're going to type the list item elements. So LI, so LI, and then type first point, close the LI. And just like that, you can duplicate, you add more LIs, second point, 
and so on. You can just Alt Shift down, and it'll be like that. So that's how you make a bullet point list. Uh, UL element, that's the container for the list, unordered list. And then you make a point with the LI or list item element between the open and closing tags, type whatever you want to show to the user. And a bullet point will be added by default. That's the default style. Uh, you might also see this element a lot when you have website navigations. They're not actually bullet point lists visually, but people repurpose the UL to be navigation links, usually at the top of websites or in some sort of navigation vertically as well. So you might see that a lot, okay? Uh, how do I make this bullet point list numbered? For example, one period, two dot, three point. It's very easy. That's the ordered list element. And all you have to do is change the parent here, this container element. Instead of UL, you type OL. Make sure to also change the corresponding closing tag to OL. You see that automatically in the right-hand side, I see one period, two period, T, and so on. That's the order list. Very easy. Just change UL to OL. Keep the LIs the same way. All right. And that, there's other kind of HTML lists. We obviously you don't have time to go over every single HTML element there is. Some of them are most popularly used. Some of them are kind of obscure, not very much used. But I try to show you the most popular ones. And these are the ones that are commonly used. If you are curious about how somebody built a website, what element they use, you can always go to your uh, browser, right? Let's go to browser here. Let's go to this website, Bing, right? Microsoft Bing. How do they build this button here? Right click, click inspect. That will open the developer tools, okay? You can see that they built this with an element called span. And then you can see all the elements. This icon is also a span element with some class attribute. And then they have this whole thing in a div, which is a generic container element. And that div in turn is inside the LI. Oh, that's what we just learned. Like I told you, they repurpose the LIs for navigation. You see that? This whole thing is a UL, an order list, which was repurposed for navigation Well, all these buttons. All right, so you're going to see that a lot. If you want to find out how people build their websites, right-click, inspect. Everyone's website is open. Anybody can see the source code. So that's how I find out how to build things. Okay. Somebody asked, how would you space out the bullet points or numbered list? Uh, to add spacing between them, that's mostly done with CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, which we'll learn in a later lesson. Okay. Uh, basically, you want to add either padding or margin to the bottom of the element. Okay, and with that, I finish this lecture.